This video is sponsored by LibXL, but more about them later. Reading and writing Excel files sounds like fun to me. At least, that is, if my application can do it for me. But how would we do that? I mean, writing a text file might be straightforward, but respecting the Excel formatting sounds a bit more complex. Well, it doesn't need to be. Let's put together an application in this video capable of doing just that with the help of C Sharp and .NET. Let's get right into it. Before we get started, let's make sure we have all the necessary software installed. You'll need Visual Studio for this tutorial. If you haven't installed it yet, head over to the Visual Studio website and download the latest version. Make sure to include the .NET desktop development workload during the installation process. Luckily, however, you don't necessarily need Microsoft Office for that, so you can skip that one. All right, once you've got that sorted, out, let us create a new c -sharp project. For this simple example, we will build a console application, as this app focuses on Excel file handling. So search and select the console app from the list. Then give your project a name, choose where to save it on your drive and where to save the solution. We will save the solution in the same directory. Choose .NET 7 and select do not use top level statement. Click on create. And now let's set up our requirements for the application to work. So the open XML package is what we need. So this package essentially will allow us to interact with the Excel files without any need for specialized software. So go to the project tab, manage NuGet packages and search for open XML. You should get document format.openxml as your first result. Install that and you should be good to go. Now let's start coding. At the top of our program CS file, you'll see some using statements. These would be to include all the necessary libraries from our openxml package. So it's using document format.openxml, then the same with dot packaging and with dot spreadsheet. Document format OpenXML here is the main namespace for the OpenXML SDK. The packaging one is the namespace that contains classes that help us package and manage the Excel files. And the spreadsheet statement is the namespace that contains classes specific to Excel operations. Next, we have our program class and the main method. If you selected do not use top level statements before, it should just be here. If not, you can just add them now. Now we can begin with the main part. First, we essentially want to start the interaction with the user. So we'll print some messages and ask for the file name of the Excel file they want to work with. Next, we check if the user has provided a file name. If they haven't, we'll use a default file name. We also check if the file exists on the disk. So here we are using an if statement to check if file path is empty. If it is, we set it to a default value of your file.xlsx. So in this if statement, we're using file.exists to check if the file actually exists on the disk. If the file doesn't exist, we'll create a new one using open XML SDK. Here we're using a using statement to manage the resource. Spreadsheet document.create is used to create a new Excel file. The spreadsheet document type.workbook specifies that we're creating a workbook. Next, we're creating a new workbook part, which is essentially the container for the Excel workbook. We then initialize it with a new workbook object. Here we are creating a new worksheet part and initializing it with a new worksheet object. We also pass in a new sheet data object, which will hold the data for this worksheet. This line creates a sheet collection inside the workbook. This collection will hold all the individual sheets in the Excel file. Here we're creating a new sheet object and setting its properties. We then add the sheet to the sheets collection. And finally, we save the workbook and this writes all our changes to the disk. Now, since we already have something going on, let's see if our logic works out. Press on run, wait for it to launch. Perfect, it's asking for a file name. Write one down, then something like this should be fine. And enter. 
Alright, this should have created our new file because obviously this one wasn't created yet. Let's check for that. Click on program.cs, open container folder, bin, debug, net7 and there we have it. Great. That should give us now an Excel file to work with no matter if it exists or not. So let's start with the file reading next. Before we continue though, I want to take a quick minute to talk about an amazing tool that can make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to handling Excel files. I'm talking about today's sponsor, LibXL. LibXL is a powerful library that allows you to read and write Excel files without needing Microsoft Excel. Imagine the convenience of exporting and extracting data to and from Excel files with minimal effort. And guess what? It's not just for C Sharp. It supports multiple languages such as C, C++, Delphi, PHP, Python and even Fortran. LibXL offers a plethora of features that go beyond standard options. It supports both old and new Excel formats from Excel 1997 all the way to 2021. Plus, it has separate editions for Linux, Mac and iOS. And when it comes to performance, we're talking about writing speeds of up to 2.1 million cells per second for numbers. That's blazingly fast. And the best part, it comes with a royalty-free distribution, meaning you can use the library in your commercial applications without any additional fees. So if you're serious about taking your Excel operations to the next level, you've got to check out LibXL. Visit their website, which we've linked in the description below, to learn more and get started. Now let's read the data from the Excel file. So we must open the file so that we can then extract the data from it. For that again, we use a using statement to manage the resource. Spreadsheet document.open is used to open an existing Excel file. The false parameter specifies that we're opening the file in read-only mode. Great, we've opened the Excel file and now we'll read its content. Here we're getting the workbook part from the opened document. This part contains all the data and definitions for the workbook. In this line, we're using links first method to get the first sheet object from the workbook. This is where our data is stored. If you want to know more about link, we're going to upload a tutorial on link in depth very soon. And then here we're getting the worksheet part associated with the sheet we just found. This part contains the actual data in the sheet. Next, we get the sheet data object from the worksheet. This object contains all the rows and cells in the sheet. Here we are checking if the sheet is empty. If it is, we print a message to the console. That will be the case, for example, for when we create a new file with the application, as it's obviously going to be empty. If the sheet is not empty though, we loop through each row and cell to print the content to the console. There we go. That would be our second milestone reached. Let's check out how it looks in our app. Press run and there we go. It asks us for our file again. Let's use the same one again as before. And it opened it, read it and told us that it's empty, which makes sense. We just created it in the previous step. Now comes the moment where we actually write to it. All right, for that, we will follow a similar pattern as with reading, just with a few key differences. Let's get to it. First, naturally, we ask the user if they want to add a new row to the Excel file. We then read their response. If the user's response is Y, which stands for yes, we proceed to add a new row. This is just a simple addition to maybe handle other kind of responses depending on the response. Although ready for any kind of continuation you may think of, like giving them a list of options or asking what they want to do next, we will simply use it as if you say no, the application will just end. Enough for this video scope, I'd say. If the user enters yes though, we then ask the user to enter the data for the new row, separated by commas. We then split this string into an array and this is how this application is going to do it. But you can imagine that there are many other options as well if you wanted to use them. So we then open the Excel file again, but this time with the right access by setting the second parameter to true. 
Here we create a new row object and loop through the user's data to create a new cell object. We then append these cells to the new row and the new row to the sheet. And well, that essentially does it. This will take our output and write it inside of our Excel files separated by cells. Finally, we print a thank you message to the console. Great, let's test it now and see how it runs. As before, run it, give it your file name. File is empty, correct? Yes. And now let's just add John, comma, though, comma, and let's say his age, which is, for example, 30. Now it will finish and close with a nice closing message. And now we can rerun to see how the application will read our newly added data. And if we do that, add our file name there. It has read and printed out the data we just added. If we go ahead and open the file itself as well, we should be able to see it written in there. Just open containing folder again, bin debug net, and there it is. Double click and here is our newly added entry. Perfect. So there we have it. Our application works correctly. And yes, in its current form, you would need to rerun the program to read the new data and rerun for any additional line you want to write but you do have the functionality working. This means that now it is time for you to improve the usability and accessibility, as well as the general looks of the application. This app can easily be converted to use some visual framework like WPF, for example. So yes, now it's your turn. Get this app and make it competitive. Do you want to learn how? Well, for that, we got plenty of tutorials as well. For MAUI, check out our latest MAUI video, where we build a cross-platform app in mere minutes. And for WPF, well, what about our in-depth WPF video, where we build a full journaling application that even uses a database? The possibilities are endless. And with that, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and as always, happy coding.